Adiós, ángel mío, ya vas a partir. No eras angelito, pero eras mi papá. Te tuve cinco años en mi vida. So thank you for that. And let's start this bitch up. What's up, everybody? What the fuck is going on? Welcome back to Cooking with Bird Martinez, the one, the only bird motherfucking Tinez, bitch. Say louder for the bitches in the back. All the bitches in the back. All the fucking puta sucias in the way back. So I know what you guys are thinking. Bird, are you cursing in front of La Virgencita? Bird, are you cursing in front of, you know, the Santitos, Jesucristo, and all that? Yo, me and God, me and the Virgin Mary, me and my Santitos, it's different. I, ever since I was little, I've always talked to them. Like, the way I talk to you guys, that's how I talk to God. I'm just like, God, you know, I fucked up. I shouldn't have done that. But, you know, I felt good at the moment. Please help me change. Please help me, you know, be more good. And at this moment, why do you, why did you make me like this, you know? And I talked to him and like, I don't hear his voice. Like, you know how people be like, oh, I hear his voice and shit like that. I don't hear his voice. I just feel him like, Calmate, pendeja, you know? Because I know, you know that little voice in your head that's telling you don't do this and don't do that. And like, you know what you're supposed to do, but we are the ones that decide to be fucked up. We are the ones that decide to hurt people, to lie, to deceive, and to fornicate, and to do all that stuff. But anyways, so today's video, um, I wanted to share with you guys because, you know, I share a lot of myself. And you know, like some of my family don't understand that. But if I could tell, if I could get a dollar for each time a family member told me, Erica, stop talking about personal stuff. You know, my mother-in-law heard when I, how I fuck her son. My sister heard explicit, explicit my, about my first orgasm. My little sister, my, everybody in the fucking, their mama, everybody knows my story, but I don't care. This is me, this is my story, and if I want to share it, and if I feel comfortable with saying it, then it's all good in the motherfucking neighborhood. And it is what it is. And this is how I was born. I can't, I can't explain it. Así soy, así me voy a morir con la pinche boca, and God gave me my voice back. Acuérdense, I couldn't speak for months. I couldn't move, right? I couldn't move. And that hurt my soul. But when I couldn't talk, when I couldn't talk, that hurt my deeper than my soul that hurt my whole everything when i couldn't talk because these fucking nurses i was like they're like i'm sorry sweetie i can't read lips okay hey bitch so then i would go like this i would be like because remember you couldn't talk i couldn't talk but i could make noises and for hours and hours and hours i would be like It sounds ridiculous. Pero ni así, ni así me hacían caso. Las cabronas hijas de su pinche madre. Por eso, when people be like, oh, oh, family people be like, stop talking, stop talking. No, I will never stop talking porque solo hay una vida. Una pinche vida. Ask my dad, ask my dad. And this is the whole reason I'm making this video. My dad passed away. And I know, I know what you guys are thinking. Bitch, you talk so much shit about your dad. So much shit about your dad in every single video you talk about how much he hurt you. Yes, he hurt me so much. And for so many years, I was so angry at him. In a way, I'm still angry at him because I feel like, whew, we didn't, yeah, like, como se dice, the last three times I spoke to him, I don't know, I just wanted to hear about him. First, he would talk about, about another religion that he wanted me to convert. Then he would just, he, he's like a narcissist, you know? He's not a regular person. He's a narcissist, selfish motherfucker, or was a narcissist, selfish motherfucker. And um, 
I don't know. It's 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 conflicting. But anyways, today's video is about him, and um, I wanna rewind, rewind. I wish I had like a freaking, you know, como they make in the in the videos. Please, by the way, I need to cut my hair. I need to cut my puntas. Um, está todo madreado. Um, and you guys could see like the rewindness from the day, you know. So my dad and my mom met when they were 18, when they were eight. And my dad's grandfather told my dad, um, you, should, you should get with one of the daughters of Teresa Juan, my grandmother, of my mom's side, because they look, she has thighs, she has good thighs to have babies. By the way, my mom and my, and my tia in the ranchito where there's like freaking 800 people, that's it. Um, they were like the thickest, you know, my mom, but don't, but don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? And my dad was the only son. So he had like nice clothes. I mean, they were from the rancho, they were all poor. But my, my grandmother from my dad's side, she worked in the city of Mexico. So she would bring nice clothes from Mexico and made him into this like, my dad has always been like, oh, I look good, look at me, you know? I'm like, so, I don't know, he's always been, selfish very very selfish so they met my mother um started working at eight she would wash the clothes of you know girls um, the blankets the sheets of you know when girls went into labor she would wash the sheets and she was only eight years old and um my 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 grandmother and my and my grandfather would beat her ass and she was going through a lot so she thought that by getting married she was gonna you know be free and get out of the house and start a new life no it sadly it wasn't like that so on the first day that my mom on the on their wedding day and my mom and my dad actually when they got married my dad beat my mom's ass he dragged her by the hair and just dragged her like I don't know. I, I mean, I know the reason, but I don't think my mom would be comfortable with me saying like, that's like, that's like really deep right there. So this is how my mom's life started. She's never been like free, like, okay, like some, I'm happy. You know, it's always been some shit, some shit over some other shit or some other shit. Y le digo a mi mamá, it's because yeah, life hits you, but you need to fight back. Fuck these motherfuckers, you know? So... When my mom and my dad got together, they had my big sister. So her name is Pilar. And my mom and my my mom and my sister stayed in, in Mexico and my dad came to cross cross the border. Then my ma my mom caught up and they started living here in Ventura. And my dad, yes, he would work in the fields, do his thing, but as soon as he got some money, he would go spend that money. He was an alcoholic. And every time, every time my mom would try to like leave him and be like, you know, I'm not gonna be with you anymore because you, you hit me too much. He would like, I saw my father so many times getting on his knees. I'm gonna change, I promise this time, this and that. And my mom would take him back. I don't know how to explain it. But my dad had that, He it's like, he had this way of convincing people to do things that they shouldn't do, you know? He's always been like a, a, a talker. Maybe that's where I get it from. But I feel like I talk, but I talk for something, for a meaning, for to help others. So when I was five, um, you know, I had already gone through all this bullshit. Like, as my, me and my mom would watch novelas, like, Maria, del, Maria Mercedes va a servir la usted. And we would be chilling. And then we would hear like the, like the door, like my dad is coming. And my mom would just hide me because she knew what time it was. Like my dad would come home drunk and he would, you know, start beating my mom's ass. So when I was five, uh, me and my mom were chilling. We were watching a movie and my dad was outside. He was outside doing mechanica, he was fixing his car. And um, I I was just bored, you know, I was a traviesa. So I went and I went outside and I and I, I saw this little kid, his name was Ruben, but I used to call him Albondiga because he was, you know, chubby. 
he had a gum in his hand and um i told him can i have one and he said no so i was like you know what motherfucker i'm gonna jack you fool so i took some gum away from him and i went back with my mom um the little boy told my dad and I, you know when people are drunk they like act so different so my dad got so fucking offended like so fucking offended and he was just like i don't know what the fuck but he came in the house and he just grabbed me started beating my ass i was i'm like i was like little mario size i was a little five-year-old he grabbed me from the ears pulled me up and swung me and then threw me so he ripped my little ass ears he ripped them from here to here and um that happened my mom was like why did you go outside i told you not to go outside and the next day um i went to school my babysitter had already like covered some of my you know que se miraban mis moretones but this time she was like nah not no more so she pulled my hair up they saw me in school they told me what happened erica what happened i said oh i fell off my bike the principal, I remember the skinny old lady, she's like, tell me the truth, sweetie. If you ch tell me the truth, nothing's gonna happen. Fucking lies. As soon as I told her that my dad hit me, um, I remember like some other people coming, all these people going, and I got in a car. They took, they took a social worker came, they took me to a foster care. Anyways, the point of this story is that my father left you know he left my mom was pregnant she was about eight months pregnant this is was like the beginning this is was the beginning of like the end with my father's relationship um and i'm saying this in front of you so you know how much you hurt me but like i'm cool with you now i mean it takes death to finally be cool but anyways life is a trip bro so my dad instead of facing como se dice facing the music he ran away to texas because he didn't want to go to jail i was in foster care for a month and then i came back my mom was pregnant and i know what a lot of people say why do women get pregnant from a guy that's beating her ass why she's still with that man you know she's still with the man a lot of people a lot of victims people don't understand that it's not because they like it because i know that's what people say oh he beats her ass it's porque le gusta she must like it she likes that life she keeps staying with him like it, they always blame the woman then they, don't they say that don't you think that physical abuse is not just this the bruises that's the that's the the smallest thing the the worst thing is when they abuse you from your mind you you think that you cannot be with this without this man you don't you think that you can't make it on your own i saw so many times that my dad would steal the rent money my dad would take us to the laundry mat or or to i don't know where and say i'll be back in an hour and, and we would stay there seven hours waiting for him outside and my mom would hug me and she would be crying i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry this was ongoing for years and then finally when my dad would leave i wanted my family back so i would beg my mom please take my dad back please take my dad back and i always think about that like damn i i actually like contributed to that bullshit. so anyways so my dad left to Texas, and I don't know how this motherfucker, I don't know how this motherfucker ended up, but he went to Alaska. He went to work on a ship over there. He ended up in Alaska, and then this, this is the times when he would write to me. And it was actually awesome because he would write to me, I would write back, and this and that. And we actually had a relationship, but I was still mad at him, but I was a, like, I was like a chamaca. You know, I wasn't like a teenager when you start getting evil and crazy. Um, <clears throat> after my dad left, he got in trouble over there. He ended up in jail. And this is when I started like, you know, kind of hating him. Because I'm like, you leave and you end up in jail anyways. 
Like you left because you didn't want to go to jail because of me, but you ended up in jail either way. Like the problem is you. So for all this time, I'm hating, I'm hating him, but I'm also wondering what do I have of him? Because when you grow up without a dad, you, you, you hate them because they left because they had the, the, those pinches huevos de dejar a una niña. But you also wonder, like, what do I have of him? Um, I wonder how he is. If I had a, like, you're always thinking these weird things. You don't understand unless you live it, you know? And then you see all these other kids with their mom and their dad, and you kind of want to be like that. But you're acting all tough, like, nah, fuck that, I don't need him. So my dad's in Alaska, he's in the in jail. He ends up getting deported. He goes to Mexico, he tries to come back. He ends up in Mexico again. When he goes back to Mexico, he sees my sister, Pilar, and he makes her life a living hell. You know, he starts talking shit about her. He gets close to her. He gets crazy on her. He gets his her, his his name tattooed on her name tattooed on his chest. It's just my dad was just a crazy fucking person. I just don't understand. And he started drinking when he was eight. You know, he started drinking when he was eight. So I feel like he never fully developed. Like, Cause you know, you're developing and when you put alcohol in that shit, you just mess yourself up. So my dad ended up with a lady with kids. And this is when I lost my shit. When I found out that my dad was raising daughters that were not his, I was like, how could you do this to me? I, my sister Pilar wasn't raised with him as a child. My sister Julia, he left when she was, when, when my mom was pregnant. I had him for five years. Imagine having something so so close to your hands and then slipping away it, it's slipping away it's like slapping you in the fucking face and then so many fucking times i wanted my dad when you know guys would do shit to me a guy wanted to rape me you know i got jumped so much fucking shit happened to me and i'm like if only i had my dad because my mom was always working always working to try to bring us some fruit into the house so anyways, years passed. I, I don't talk to my dad. I just hear hear about him, that he's like fucking his life up. He's like drinking mezcal. You know, mezcal is like tequila, but on steroids. And he just doesn't stop. Finally, um, my sister calls me and tells me that my dad wants to talk to me. And she's like, no, like he's really fucking sick. He's 59 years old at this time. And I'm just like, bruh, I don't know how to feel. Like, I don't really want to talk to him. But you know, my forgiving self, I forgive everybody. I don't think, I forget. Most, I don't, it just, So, my sister calls him first a week before me. And my sister's like conflicted because my sister really didn't have him in his life. But she tells me she had a good conversation with him. So on July 4th, my sister calls me from Mexico. Mind you, I have a fucking trash bag on me because I told Mario, Mario, can you please dye my hair, gordo? Because I have so many canas and I look crazy. He puts a mantel, the tablecloth on the floor. He tapes it around. He puts this chair in the middle, puts the fucking trash bag over me a towel it's like a whole dissection up in this bitch and i'm just like bruh just dye my hair so they start dyeing my hair section by section being all professional and shit putting the motherfucking vaseline around and then i'm and then um i was like he's calling um your sister's calling you i'm like i'll call her back later and he's like no answer right now it's your dad and i'm like okay cool let me answer so i answer I don't even know. I'm not even ready. I'm in here in a trash bag. He doesn't even recognize me because it's been years. And he's like, chatita, chatita. And I just lose my shit. 
You know my crybaby ass? I'm just like, oh hell no, oh hell no, oh hell no. He is in the bed. Skinny, yellow, defeated, old. How many times? How many times when I was so mad at him was like, I hope he dies fucking alone. I hope he suffers everything we suffered and we didn't have no fucking food, stupid motherfucker. But to see him like that, defenseless, in pain, with cirrhosis, I was reading about that shit and that shit's not a fucking joke. Like, that shit's fucked. He's like, me duele la panza, me duele. He can no longer walk. He can no longer do anything by himself. Mi papá, el cabrón, el chingón, el hijo de su pinche madre, Juan Pascual. I did not know how to feel. I'm just looking at him like, bruh. And then he brings that shit up. He's like, chatita, te acuerdas? Remember when we were, um, when we got lost in Chinatown? And, um, I had never been to Chinatown when I was this age. And he... And I guess I was looking around. I'm like, all these, all these, all these chinos, man, all these chinos. I'm like, Dad, I could feel my eyes stretching. I think I'm turning Chinese like them. And he thought it was the funniest thing ever. Um, so he was reminding me of that story, and I just couldn't believe that he he had a moment, a memory of me. This whole time I'm thinking he doesn't give a fuck about me. He never cared if I ate. He never cared if I was clothed. Like fuck him, but not fuck him. So um I'm talking to him. He's kind of like, uh, like talking. And then he's like, um, pobre leña de pirul. And I'm like, te la canto, te la canto. Cause by the way, a lot of these songs that I sing all the time for you guys. Pobre leña de pirul que no sirves ni parder. Pobre leña de pirul que no sirves ni parder. No más para ser llorar. I learned it because of him. A lot of the songs of my mom, him. Chinga su madre, bro. This is how life ends. I sang three songs for him and he was singing back with me, kind of. But my, what I respect the most is my oldest sister, my sister Pilar. She grew up without my mom and without my dad. She grew up without my, my strict ass grandma. And, um, and she was there taking care of him, taking care of the dad that never took care of her. I'm like, bruh. So I told them we were cool. I told them, if you're gonna try, try your best. Give it all, give it all your fucking strength. If you don't wanna try that, don't try. Just let yourself go. You don't wanna suffer. This was around six, eight o'clock in Mexico. The next day I got a call. He died at five in the morning. He died at five in the morning. And I don't know how to feel. How can you feel for somebody you only had for five years, but he's also your father. He's also part of you, but you hated him for so long. How do you feel? It's confusing as fuck. I feel bad, but I'm not so sad but I feel like something's not there anymore. Cause at least I knew he was around. But so many things, so many emotions. And um, I'm not sad. I'm just like, this is life and this is what happens. And I'm so glad that he didn't die alone. Cause I really thought this motherfucker was gonna end up like in some ditch and like behind a cantina or something. Cause he lived a crazy life but he is resting now. And before I go, let me just share um, something funny with you guys. 
So little Mario asked me, Mommy, Mommy, um, where's your dad? Who's your dad? I think he just thought like, oh, my mom doesn't have a dad. And I'm like, oh, this is my dad. And I show him the tapatio bottle. I'm like, this is my dad. And then he's like, what's his name? I'm like, oh, his name is Juan. He's like, Juan? Like, number one? Like, one, two, three? One? Okay. And that was it. So that day that my dad died, he's like, he sees it like Mandy, Sophia, Mario, all around me, hugging me. He's like, mommy, mommy, what happened? What happened? I'm like, oh, nothing, baby. My dad just died. And he's like, aw, number one died? I'm sorry. Che cabrón, hijo de su madre. Um, yeah. So rest in peace, father. Um... I don't know where you at, bruh. I don't know where you at, bruh. But wherever you at, I hope you're chilling and having fun. Anyways, this is it. Thank you for watching. Eres mi amor platónico. Eres la fruta prohibida. Yo sé que es un imposible. Tu relación y la mía. Uti, u, 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 u. Te adoro, vida mi. Ella es su chata. Julia ya habló con usted. Ella es Erika. Sí, soy Erika. ¿Sí te acuerdas de mí? Sí, no, no sé. O nos perdimos en el barrio de Chino. Sí, te dije que... Ya se sentían los ojos suspirados. Todos tienen los ojos chinos. Ya. Yeah.